Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. This time, starting with Kickstarter reviews. Unfiltered Gamer is now becoming part of the Kickstarter indie board game and card game community. Yes, that's right, we'll be doing a lot of sections on specifically indie board and card games from our Kickstarter community. Starting off with our first video will be a board slash card game brought to you by Anthony Christeau. The game is called Luminous Ages, and it is a card game similar to Magic the Gathering Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon in that style of like trading cards as opposed to a living card game like maybe Android Netrunner. Luminous Ages is full of brilliant art from an artist on Patreon who has done tons and tons of books, uh, comic books specifically, uh, or maybe they're called graphic novels, as well as different art exhibitions, and he's decided to now put his art into a card game and conform it into its own living entity that kind of works with the comic book universe that he has made. So, Luminous Ages, our first Kickstarter review. Let's go ahead and see what this game's all about. Okay, guys, so this is Luminous Ages, the card game. Usually it's about two to six players, depending on the game type. Today we'll be covering Dragon Mode Cooperative, one through six players. In this game, we'll be doing a two and or three player game. One player here, one over in the back, and one being potentially the dragon. Now the dragon gods are either their own AI, or they are actually played by another player, depending on how you want to look at it. So each player is basically dealt out a hand of eight cards. Now these cards are actually fairly, fairly excellently drawn in my opinion. They've got beautiful different artworks. Tons and tons of dragon stuff. If you guys love dragons, they're going to love the art on this stuff. Different spells, creatures, legendary creatures, dream creatures. So there's a lot, a lot of extra text in this game. Much like Magic the Gathering when it comes to text, this has got a good amount too. So it's, it's kind of a more challenging game when you first pick it up, but once you kind of get the feel of it, it's not so bad. Now, in your starting zone, you're going to have a couple core lands that produce dream magic. On your turn, after you have drawn your eight cards, you get to draw one, your, one card, and then you get to place a core and or, uh, yeah, basically a core or dream land out. And if you have a land in your hand, you could also choose to play that instead. Sometimes having lands from your hand are going to be better because they produce more. As you can see, there's a production rate right there that will determine how many you can put out. After that, you would then tap and you would select either to bring out a dream structure, which are these guys over here, or you can put out maybe a card from your hand. So, for instance, we can put out this beautiful dragon bird spirit. It only costs one. You can see it right there. So we'll take that and we'll put it out. Now basically you're trying to defend your your lands because your lands are what takes damage and the dragon lord or dragon gods are attempting to do damage to your lands which is basically to you. If you go down to negative 10 life you're dead. Your objective in this game is to kill each and every one of the dragon gods. Now depending on how many players it is it's going to depend on how many dragon gods there are and the dragon god in AI mode is basically attempting to try and kill you guys in the best possible way and do the best possible actions. So you guys as a group need to decide if I were the dragon god would I do this or would I not do this and if it's going to be less beneficial or more beneficial maybe those are the options you will take. You also have a couple crest creatures. One, some here, some here, two for each of your players and you will then be able to move these quest creatures and place them onto quest lands, which happen to be over there. You would then use a die, and you would roll a die, actually a six-sided die, and if you got a high enough number, you can complete the quest. If you didn't get a high enough number, you might suffer a consequence of some kind. Completing a quest could do damage to the dragon itself, or it could do damage to yourself, or it could kill your own creatures. It's fairly different. I mean, the, the quest concept in this game is very interesting. And the quest lands never move, they can just be placing quest creatures. So for instance, this one out here, it's a quest land. If you are successful on your roll, you get two power green, white, or gold token creature with no abilities, place it on a core land. If you fail your roll, your quest creature takes a damage. So you can get little extra tokens. And you see all these tokens over here. They got tons of different little tokens, and they just start off in the game. Now, each and every dragon has 30 life, and basically your creatures are going to have to try and go through and do damage specifically to the dragon. Now, 
the dragon itself can block with its own creatures, and every single turn after you play or your opponent and your opponent plays, or, you, or you're actually in cooperative mode, you and your teammate play, the dragon will then get a card for each player, and it'll attack, and then it'll get another card, and it'll attack. Now, if it draws a land, it just kind of eats that land. If it's a spell, it just kind of plays that spell instantaneously. So that's kind of how it works, and it goes back around in circles. So after that happens, then you go ahead and you start, you play another land, or after you draw, you play another land, and, oh, this wasn't a land, so play one of these. And maybe they, they un untap, just just similar to the magic style. And there are, every creature has different stuff. Like, for instance, that bird creature has flying right there. Um, this is a spell. Destroy target opponent's creatures in a zone apart from the dream creatures. They're instead exiled to the dream zone. Now, in the cooperative dragon mode, certain spells are not going to be able to be used on the dragon's uh, generals and or creatures he spawns. It just depends. You'll have to look at the rules because there's tons and tons of different ways to play this game, which just makes it all the more interesting. And each and every creature has different effects, like this guy has guarding or... This guy is Dream Alliance and uh, Phasing. Phasing lets you move your creatures from one zone to another zone to another zone and back, maybe to help your alliance out. Dream Alliance is kind of cool too because it lets you increase the power of all of a certain color. So maybe you want a green alliance of, uh, Dream Alliance of white. That means all white creatures on the board get another power. So that's kind of how it works. All the power on the cards basically just tells you, okay, this is two, so it would cost two to play. So you would tap your two, tap your two lands here. And you can play another one, maybe on here, or on here. And they all attack as one. And leaving out your dreamlands is not good, because sometimes the dragon general is going to want to attack that dreamland and do damage to you. Now, the only way you win, like I said, is if you kill all the dragons. The only way the dragon win, the dragons win, basically, is if they can make one of your allies, any but any ally, go down to negative 10. If that happens, the game is over. So that's pretty much how you play the game. There's a lot of different little extra stuff that you can kind of weed out on your own and tons of different great artwork that comes in this game i gotta show you some of the dragon gods because these are definitely my favorite when it comes to the art in this game there you go look at that it's not too bad at all huh and they all have some really interesting names there you go some stuff in latin so that is basically how you play Dragon Mode Cooperative for Luminous Ages. So obviously you can see that the artwork is pretty good, and the gameplay seems fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it for each and every single different different mode of play. Because there's a two-player variant where you play um, against each other, and then there's a competitive Dragon Mode, and there's, there's, he's, he's pumping out more and more, and obviously as a great artist. So... That's basically it. Um, we're going to go ahead and see what, hmm, basically, is the game good relative to how great the artwork is. So let's go ahead and inform you now. All right, guys. So that's basically how you play Anthony Christo's Luminous Ages, the card game. What do I think about it? Well, first of all, like I've already said previously, this art is wonderful. And he's got tons of different ways you can enjoy his art. He has comic books. He's got specific little art, you know, posters as well as paintings and all that other good stuff. You can check that out on his Patreon. Or if you want to sponsor this game, you can go to kickstarter.com, Luminous Ages, the card game, and go ahead and check it out. So the game itself, what do I think? Well, it's pretty good. If you like TCGs, you're going to like this one. It's also interesting to note that the questing kind of puts the, into perspective this spells on board at all times. And that is a wonderful idea. I really like it. I like the fact that you get to choose, do I want to put this land out that's already in play? There's already like this whole structure of like inventory that you're avail it's available to you at the beginning of the game that you can choose. If not, you can go ahead and say, no, I want something that's in my hand. And you can go ahead and put that out as well. You're also defending stuff that is important to you. It's not just like you're defending this magical, mystical health points that you somehow have. You're actually defending the lands to which control your whole, you know, your territory or whatever. Your, your, your core magic. And once those cores are destroyed, you are destroyed as well. It works thematically. And I get the feeling, well, I haven't read a lot of the comic books, only just this one, because this is what I was sent. The card game itself plays into the Luminous Ages comic book series. And as more come out, more cards are going to come out. Now, I've mainly focused on the one to six player cooperative dragon mode variant of this card game. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting too how you had to use your character, your little, your creatures and characters and all that good stuff 
to move around the board to protect your other your other friends. So while you might be doing well in the game, if your friend is not doing well, then you're going to definitely need to help them out by bringing your creatures over. But do you really want to? Well, if they go to negative 10, you're going to lose. So you're going to have to, but you're also going to leave yourself more defenseless in the next turn or two. Because you never know what the dragon's going to bring out. He can bring out absolutely nothing, or he can bring out the wrath of the gods. You don't really know. It's going to be a rather difficult experience for, for you as, as a table if he continues to draw creature after creature after creature and you're dra drawing nothing but lands. But that's kind of the randomness of any, any TCG. As well as the great thing about the booster packs, how they work, the booster packs are going to be are going to be fun because you're basically going to be able to make a deck of cards that you want to play with. It doesn't really matter because while you can put a bunch of overpowered cards in here to help you fight the dragon gods, the dragon god can also get those cards out on the first turn. Do you want that to happen? Well, that's up to you. You have to decide what's the best way to beat the dragon gods with this specific deck that you can play with that's not strong enough for him to beat you with. So it's kind of got that little, little added bonus there. As well as maybe you're going to add dream structures to the to the game. Because well, basically in dragon mode, you get to select all these specific cards and put them all out. These tokens, these dream lands, the, um, the oh, sorry, not dream lands, the dream structures as well as the quest lands. And so these are all going to benefit you in some way. But how much benefit and which way can you, you know, mix them up where it's going to equate to how important it is with your deck. So there's a lot of variance to this game. And you are kind of the deciding factor as to whether or not this game is going to be more difficult or easier or you know so you get that that you get to randomize that variability based on how you feel the game's going to play out for you which is really really interesting the dragon gods are all pretty cool too and they're all really tough usually at the end of the game if you're doing really well it's not so bad but however you can add in an extra dragon god and make it all that more difficult so that's pretty much what I gotta say about Luminous Ages. Very interesting game, unique concepts, great artwork, really works well together cooperatively. The competitive version, I played it a couple times and it was all right too. It's not bad. It's kind of one of those back and forth card games and you can basically set your deck up how you'd like. Not bad. But I really, really recommend this Dragon Mode cooperative version because it was a lot of fun playing with three, four, and five players. It all worked. It doesn't matter because the dragon just draws an extra card per player. So you're almost playing solitaire, but you're also helping your friends out while they're playing solitaire. And when you do that, it kind of hurts yourself. So game works. Fun. Luminous Ages the Card Game by Anthony Christeau. Definitely check it out on Kickstarter, guys. We will be doing more of these videos very soon. Go ahead and go to everythingboardgames.com for other giveaways or uh, giveawaygeek.com for even more giveaways, or if you'd like, my site, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away Machi Koro, really bad art, and Robot Turtles with the expansion from Millionaire's Row for Machi Koro. Couple clicks, who knows, you might win three games off the bat. Gonna end pretty soon here. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.